Well, hello, Soju Talk Nation. Uh, it is the Soju Talk crew here. Um, we are going to be reporting on the news that I would assume many of you know at this point. Um, on April 19th, it was confirmed that Astro's Moonbin passed away. Fantasio confirmed that the uh, police in Korea also confirmed that a very unfortunate situation. Um, we've had to cover, I think, two, three, or four of, of these type of situations since we started the podcast. It, it never gets easier. Um, it's just... It's just super surprising, super shocking, and uh, overall very sad for everyone involved. Um, we'd like to send our condolences to, to Moonbin's friends, his family, the members of Astro, um, the people at Fantagio, his family specifically, uh, his sister Sua, who's in Billy. I heard mm-hmm. that uh, today that uh, Mystic announced that they've canceled the rest of Billy's promotions of Inoya, which I think is the, the correct decision, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, Juan or Anita, you have anything to add to what I've just said? Um, yeah, just as as we mentioned, it's very, very shocking news, very upsetting news as well. Um, just want to remind people to be respectful of the family, you know, I think things have been done very privately so far, so just be aware that people have different methods of mourning, and that's fine, just be respectful, be kind, um, since it's just a difficult time for them, yeah. um, and yeah, just, just be 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 nice out there and yeah i i forgot to add this to my out. part but um mm-hmm. as anita saying right there reach out if you're going through anything in your life please talk to someone else about it communicate it um mm-hmm. i'm sure everyone you know your family your friends anything like that would 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 love for you to talk to them before you make some kind of decision that's irreversible yes okay warren yeah um i hope they yeah i it's it's never easy to think talk about situations like these let alone talk about mm-hmm. it or, or even think about it you know what i mean um it's moonbin is an artist who is kind of in our age group um i think he's yeah you know, below me um, a little younger yeah mm-hmm. and you know it's, it's difficult to fathom the process that he had to go through to you know to get to this outcome and it's i hope wherever he is hope he's able to rest in that's the peace. I hope um, for everyone else. I, I really hope you're able to do what you're able to do. To, I hope you're able to do what you need to do to mourn for him and, and remember him in the best ways. Because he was mm-hmm. a beloved member of the community, obviously. Um, lovely member of yeah. Astro. Um, so, yeah, I hope he's able to so, um, rest in peace. Yeah, so this is going to be the extent of... Uh, us mentioning the situation on the podcast this week because I don't think a lot of our listeners would feel comfortable if we uh, just harbored on about this for a very, really long time during the news section or something like that. So uh, we would once again like to wish our condolences uh, to Moonbin and his families, and we hope that he rests in peace. What's up, everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 233, and we're recording on April 23rd, 2023. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. Yo, a lot of twos and threes in that intro. I'm surprised I got through that. But um, as a quick reminder, check out Soji Talk on your favorite podcast platform. Sub to us on YouTube and join the Soji Talk Discord and be a part of the nation. Um... Yeah, we don't we don't got too much in the announcements or sponsors. Um, thank you for uh, for uh, re- respecting what was going on at the beginning of the show. Um, we're we're gonna do our best to keep the energy high this week and uh, talk about the big new releases. We got three of them: Alice with Showdown, Augusty with Hegum, and Seventeen with Super. That's a weird English name for that song, I think. But um, I have an explanation why. We'll get to that in a second. Thank though. you. Okay, the first song, Alice Sh- Showdown. They spaced it very oddly. It show spaced down and the d is capital it's kind of weird my uh, autocorrect has been trying to fix it all week they are from mm-hmm. iok company last three songs dance on power of love and jackpot back when they were El- elris i believe um this song's aight like, <laughs> <laughs> what did that dance, dance on was better i'm gonna be straight up with you right am i wrong hmm. by the way i'm bald um don't ask it happened uh at the moment so, are you going yeah. to the military no, I'm just like, I've gotten so old 
and lazy that like it's the summer and i'm gonna be working a lot that i'm like i don't yeah. want to deal with my hair so i just shaved it all off oh my god so for maximum efficiency yes that's okay. the reason well you look sexy as always douglas <laughs> 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 all right let's talk about showdown alice um i don't know it felt like a like a house uh, k-pop kind of track Almost reminded me of Roland, you know, from Brave Girls. A oh, bit. yeah. Oh, it really does. Yeah. Wow. It's that summer hit yeah, type right. of sound. I guess summer's here already. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting there. It's a little hot already, so I, I don't blame them. Um, it, it's, I, I don't know, it's got a good energy. It's not mm-hmm. particularly memorable or anything. Um, uh-huh. But at the same time, I think I feel like the song really flows well. There's not a lot of like big drop energy nor a big increase in energy. It's just pretty consistent mm-hmm. throughout. Um, so it's not really offensive. It's pretty fun to listen to. It's it's got a nice chorus, you know, like you know, like a show down. Yeah, they uh, are down uh, two members at the moment too. Mm, this was a six ice. member. Five. Deal. It was five. Five member deal. Five. Yeah, instead of a uh, seven. Oh. Speaking okay, this is a quick aside. I'm gonna I'm gonna already make an aside. You talked about Brave Girls. Did you hear the news last night, Warren? Yeah, yes. That uh <laughs> Minyoung and Verbal Jin they they were like <laughs> reported as dating, but then both companies were like they already broke up. They did date though. Too late. Oh <laughs> no. Yeah, too late. yeah. <laughs> there was news you know, that Minyoung had dated Verbal Jim for a while, but then they uh they already broke up by the time it was announced. They were late to the to the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was kinda awkward, yeah. but um, going anyway, back to Alice, Anita, back did you feel the, the summer tropical vibes? Were you down with them? I did. I I did enjoy the sound they were going for this time around. Um, I think, I mean, I think it's kind of on track with Dance On, or at least that's not yeah, exactly yeah. the same sound, but in the execution, I want to say it's pretty consistent. Um, definitely, I feel like the chorus was the highlight for me. I think it did a good job of capturing like the energy they were going for. Um, so like whenever the chorus was coming in, I was like, okay, yeah, this is like the point in the song that we're supposed to really catch on to. Um, and I think it, they succeeded in that. Um, I also felt that th- the concept of this music video, right, was very much of like individual shots for each member. And I found that effective in actually... Introdu- not in- introducing but like reintroducing or getting to know better like recognizing the members themselves because mm-hmm. um, I think previously there's been more of a push for Sohi like understandably I guess but I felt that with this music video there was a little bit more of like okay I know other members a little bit more now I, I always think it's like uh I mean there's like a trope we see in K-pop every now and then and I always feel like it's a pretty effective trope if anything you know what mm. I mean like um another yeah. example that comes to my mind is when uh, is the debut of IOY because they also did like uh, yeah several different- it's common right right mm. they did dude that, that Dream Girl song respectively it was trash I never the said the song was good sir it that's that's so not bad. what I'm saying it was so bad, <laughs> what I'm it was so bad. continue um, even though I love IOI continue but like, <laughs> that song this song well, well sorry both music videos they do a pretty good job of like characterizing each member um mm-hmm. and like you I might not know everybody's names super well but now I know you know like Same. one of them likes to dance one of them likes Celine the other one likes a lot of designer high-end brands and likes to go shopping Fashion. and mm-hmm. drive a it was actually that was kind of funny because like on when top, she drove the car no 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 <laughs> not, that is a separate thing are you trying to make a weird joke or it oh no it's not no okay what are you trying to imply <laughs> in the top of the music anything. video in the top of the music video they were like oh i don't need high-end luxury brands it's, i just need me to make myself appealing and then the girl shows up in like Celine and like all these like high end designer like <laughs> brands. I'm like, what, is, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> like you literally <laughs> just contradicted yourself. Like, I don't know. I mean, it was still really cool to look at. I guess, yeah. In terms of the the song, in terms in terms of that car, she drove like one of my favorite cars, the McLaren seven twenty S. I think it's a, a beautiful looking car. Was that a McLaren? It was a McLaren seven twenty S. I think it's an aesthetically very beautiful car. Wow. Dang. I only I was, know what that is because I think I was like I, I was so shocked during the music video that I stopped paying attention to her. I was watching the car, dude. I was like, <laughs> <"What?"> <laughs> that was my reaction. And I'm like, that's a and it had the it had the Lamborghini doors on it. I don't know if those come stock. Oh, nice. oh. Um, they have some good money behind their production. I think it's surprising because um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I saw the sales numbers, guys. 
of uh, it's like, it's the, like the, the one I, I found the six day sale numbers. Okay, one thousand one hundred and forty six albums sold. All Wait, right. what? Well, How many? A thousand one hundred and forty six. One thousand? Did you say one thousand? Yeah, on day four they sold nineteen albums. On uh, day five they sold twenty two. Like nineteen thousand and twenty two thousand? No. Like nineteen. Oh. <laughs> Yo, I know. Mm. If you're an Alice fan, you gotta help them out, guys. I like, le- okay, I legit thought you were like cutting out, and I was having audio issues. <laughs> No, dude. Day one, 758. Day two, 139. Day three, 58. Day four, 19. Day five, 22. Day 650. Well, well, now I feel bad for asking two, three times. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I feel like we've become desensitized to this like album sales inflation in the last we've seen the last like two, three years or like everybody sells six digit sales. Then we have Alice with like ha, ha, okay. Here's the thing: they rebranded from Elris in order to gain traction, right? Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know objectively if it's worked very well, but considering the music video is 114,000 views at this <sighs> point. Like I'm not. This is independent of my feelings of the song. This is just like the objective facts, right? The numbers. Right. Mm. Oh, well, it's rough. It's rough out here. No, it's it's rough. And I'm trying to think about how they can improve or, or like where they can market themselves better. Because that's that's what you got to think about. This music right? video didn't. This came off as like they spent a decent chunk of money, right? It didn't feel cheap by any. No, Dude, they had a McLaren with a Ferrari door, apparently, according to you. That yeah. sounds expensive. I'm I'm concerned. Is what I'll say. Oh um, man. Mm. Um. Oh no! It feels like we're playing that. You remember a couple weeks ago we used to play after the show we used to play that thing. Yeah. Oh the no. Girl group uh simulator run running yeah. simulator business simulator that is you know like cuz I'm thinking about it from the perspective of IOK company this is their label and they've been around for a couple of years they've been around since the year 2000 so they probably have a fair amount of funds. How how else do you strategize to use your funds effectively? You know, to market these kids, because you can have a good it's, music video, yeah. but like it's one thing, it's one thing to have a good music video, but the other part of it is getting people to watch it and click on it. You know, right? Mm. You can luck out like fifty fifty did. Don't get me wrong, but like luck isn't something everybody else has. It's a tough thing because how can the company justify when the first, essentially first week sales is like thousand albums, which would probably equal like. Ten thousand dollars, but then you have to factor in all the costs they had in that, right? That's a tough sell to any investor. The very tough sell. Um. All right. Look. Um. People often say that sales are a good signifier of quality. This this is obviously the counter example. I think the song's like pretty good for like getting nineteen sales on the fourth day. Is that what you said? Nineteen did. Yeah. Yeah. Look. 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 That's a pretty good. Now this is a pretty good song. It's, it's like there's not a lot to complain about this track. It's, sure, it's a little forgetful, but like I'm it, actually shocked at how low that number is. If I'm thinking about it, no, it shouldn't be that low. I thought mm. I th- no, you're right. I would expect at least one more zero. I would think like if I if you had told me before we started the pod, Doug, what do you think their one week sales was? Right, I would have said at least fifteen k. Yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah, right? at least somewhere in the four digits. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, oh, Alice, Nugu group, nobody, who's that? You know, like, sure, but there's a whole other tier of Nugu below this. Like, for sure, dude. Way many. <laughs> um, when, I, when I sift through the, like, the, the songs that we're going to, like, put in the song poll each week, there's yeah. some people I'm like, I do not, I, I learned of your existence right now. You know, <laughs> like, there's, there's people like that. Yeah. Or like there's companies that debut these groups and I'm like, what company is this? And it's some like sometimes it's this weird name and I'm like, who the f are these people? You know, I have to Google for a while to to understand what's going on. Um, Here's the thing: if you're looking for a pretty upbeat, high energy but kind of chill um, house, so much track, K-pop mm-hmm. track, yeah, like you should check this out. It's does not deserve 19 so it's a good track i mean it's it's i'm I sure like it, yeah. To, yeah to be to be like real honest i always thought that elris was underrated as elris like i remember liking some of them songs more like more than the average person did like i always thought jackpot was a very good song um good lord very 
I don't know. I don't know. And th- and this music video was released on the One Day K channel, which has 25 million subscribers, right? Yeah. So this was in 25 million people's feeds, and 114 of them watched it. Well, there's still time for promotions. I'm guessing. Right. Maybe they'll get more traction. Who knows? Maybe you know. Maybe now that the song's out, maybe they can reap the benefits of it. You know, not. Every song mm-hmm. is successful right out of I, the bat. So. If, if, if I think about these two Alice tracks, the last two, because I could I could remember them off the top of my head because we covered both of them. Mm-hmm. They're okay. Like yeah, I don't I don't yeah. get it. Uh, maybe 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 like these days K-pop is really at like a, a, an extreme value. Where if you're if you're not doing well, you're doing terrible, and if you're doing well, you're doing extremely well. Kind of feels like that, right? Oh, maybe. Is this division of wealth? Is that what you're telling me? I about? think we're I think we're I think we're in that kind of phase right now. <laughs> considering some of the album sales I've seen lately from some groups on both low end and high end, right? Mm. Like it's tough out here if, if you don't have a ton of traction. Late stage capitalism. Late stage. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I think. If marketing is the issue, um, one thing I think the song could one thing the song could do differently to maybe play to their benefit a little bit is the song is a little safe, a little too much. Um, maybe if, maybe if it was offensive, I don't really know, I don't really care. Maybe if there was something that was a little more memorable, like a like a hook that was a little more risky, um, that maybe that could have helped them a little bit. Um, I think they need a risk. Yes, because I think mm. this type of song would be fine if there's an established big fandom buying stuff, you know? Right, right. I think at this point, because we've had fairly safe songs from them. Um, and and the other issue I'm, I'm having personally is that I don't see, at least with the last two songs, I know the, if I remember correctly, The Power of Love was something that they released in between the two groups. Like, it wasn't considered the actual re-debut of the of um, Alice, if I if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Let me see the thumbnail. Yes, I'm right with that. Okay, but I don't see the huge distinction between what Alice is doing and what ours could have been doing. Mm. You know, and if you're going yeah. to like rebrand someone, because you know, as if your group is around, the longer they're around, more people have possibly heard of them, right? At some point, Name right? Recognition, yeah. So yeah. when you rebrand and people aren't in the know. And know who Alice they, if they don't know that Alice is Elris, but they might have know who Elris was, right? You're you're basically starting over the building process. Mm. So I wanna see something different in order to gain some kind of traction. At least they gotta risk it, I think. Some right? risk. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Overall, decent song. Um hopefully more people support Alice because like I think this is fine to me. Do, I, I'm telling you, I'm sure most of our listeners have never heard Showdown. I, go check it out. It's a pretty fun check song. It out. Yeah. Mm. Well, not the people on our Discord. They're all over Alice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> our listeners love Good Alice. For them. Good for them. Um, next song, uh, August D. You know, uh, I I think that's that BTS kid. No. Um, he released Take Him. Uh, <laughs> from that? Big Big Hit. <laughs> less, less. I'm I'm in a mood today. Yeah, Last clearly. two songs. Where people part two, Dwechata, give it to me. Um, Hegum is a Korean instrument, right, Warren? It is. And I'll elaborate that in a second. Okay. Hegum is a, is a, is oh, like a. I guess we're doing it right now. Um, no, he- no, I'm, no, I'm going, I was just going to talk about the song. How I felt oh, about oh, okay, okay. I thought you meant, okay, never mind. Talk about the song. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think that I got more enjoyment from the music video than the song. Oh, uh, hmm. I thought that this was a really cool music video. Yeah, like, yeah. I, it was like a, it was like um, it's like the type of movies I like to watch. It's like you know, it's like a gang movie Veteran. in somewhere in Ch- in China or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. I think, right? New world. Yeah, it's like a noir movie. He ch- he he stabbed someone with chopsticks at one point. He somehow is able to shoot a gun that was in a barrel of water. I don't know how that happens, to be honest. I thought that was ridiculous. But yeah, there's a there's like a lot of gang motifs in this one. Mm. This the rapping is very aggressive. Um, as someone who doesn't really understand all the lyrics and stuff, I thought the energy was good though. I, I liked what was going on there. I had a it was like a it's like a head 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 bopper. What um, head bobber head banger head banger. Head, I, I'm out of words today. It was like a, a bit of a head banger to me. I like the youngie. I like the acting. I thought that was fun. I thought he's doing a great job there. Mm-hmm. 
Sounds but, like you like the song overall. I don't know if it's super memorable though. I can't remember. I couldn't like if you say you sing some of Hegum for me, right? I can't. I can't do that. I don't know. Yeah. Hegum, yo. Maybe. 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 The hook. The yeah, hook. I could get the hook. And how do you feel about this one? Um. Yeah, I definitely agree that the visual aspect kind of. I don't want to say overshadowed, but I paid more attention to the, like the music video, the storyline that was going on. Because I thought it was, thought it was interesting, and I found myself uh, comparing it a little bit to Twitchta, right? Because I think there were certain true, elements true, true. to that music video that were present here, and I'm, uh, I'm honestly I'm wondering, like, I wonder why we, or not we, but like him as an artist, right, re- decides to like bring this back, right? Because I felt like this is very. Very similar in a way. Bring, um, bring Storyline of like, so in Dutchita and in this music video as well, there's there's a lot of like doubling, like him playing two characters, right? Like one that is like a higher like power, I want to say, and then somebody who is like running or being persecuted, right, for doing something, I guess. And in both scenarios, the person being persecuted or like in the like who did something right and is forced um, by this other higher street street level August. person street August versus cop August, August. Sh- yeah sure let's yeah. call him that yeah yeah um, street so sugar like, cop the, sugar this is the the street person right like the character kills the cop the I don't think it's a cop I think it's authority. A- I think it's like a gang leader. Detective? No, like, or gang leader. Whatever you want to call the, it, right? No, he literally walks out the police department. No, wait, yeah, yeah. He has oh, he a, does. He's a he cop? Has, like, oh, wait, yeah. he is. Bro, I'm you did dumb. not follow okay. the plot. Good lord. What, 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 I, was just, <laughs> I was just watching the, the guns, dude. <laughs> 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 I was watching the violence, man. I was getting into that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's very interesting because I, I rewatched Dochita after watching this and I thought like, Hmm, the storyline right? seems very familiar. Like the way it ends, like it's very familiar. And I'm wondering, like, what is what is the purpose of this motif? Like, why hmm. make it two characters played by the same person no, again? They're advertising the noodles, death? noodle soups in China. And, you know, that was the ending. That's what they're. <laughs> Maybe the I don't know. I just Famous found it. Xi'an noodles. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I haven't soups. found like the reasoning for it yet, but I think it would be interesting to figure out, like. I- He's just what making an acting reel, you know, for his future career. <laughs> he's making an action Maybe. movie acting reel. Is it an acting portfolio Maybe. for his uh, next Bong Joon-ho movie? It's, it's pretty compelling, is it not? Right? It's good. Like, no. He's good at acting. I was, it's good. Here's how I see the plot, right? Here's how I see the plot. Okay. Um, and this is just my own interpretation. And and I might be wrong. I don't I don't know. Um, and I also didn't really connect it to Techita because I actually just connected it to Amygdala instead, which is a B-side but it also has a music video. Oh, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like though the, like these two music videos off the same album, they're pretty well connected, especially with the eye motif, the, the scar on the eye. Um, spoiler yeah. alert mm-hmm. and a bit of a trigger warning. In the music video for Amygdala, he causes self-harm with a box cutter on his own eye. Um, and to mm-hmm. me, that seemed like he was doing that to overcome his past, past trauma. So I'm seeing mm. these two versions of Sugar, th- these two versions of August, or uh, you know, I'm seeing it as past August and future August, mm. or past and now. I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. It it really felt like he was trying to. Freedom is Move a big on. part of uh, the oh. uh, the theme in this whole album, and it really mm-hmm. felt like a visualization of. Um, this is a little depressing, but my interpretation is that. Current Suga, current Mingi, failed to become free, right? Mm-hmm. While the while the former Mingi, former Suga, was free, yeah? Mm. And the freer, more stronger Suga kills the weaker, Once. constrained Suga. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. I could see that. It's like a competition yeah. be- between those two. That's how I saw it, which makes the the final sequence a little more sense because mm-hmm. th- at that point it's like a battle between yourself you know what i mean it's like right yeah right, yeah right. um 
I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I did a good job of elaborating that, but that's how I saw it. You know, like, um, over, it's, it's, amygdala is about overcoming your past troubles. This one is like, you have troubles because of your past. How are you going to overcome it? You know, you want to be more free. Um, that kind of thing. And that kind of goes back to the title of the track, right? Um, mm -hmm. Hegem indeed is a string instrument that's played, uh, vertically, kind of like a cello in Asia, in Korea. Yep, yep. Um, I don't think that's what the song is referring to, though. Because um, if you look at the title sequence of the video, it has two Mandarin characters, which in Korean is read as higum, which isn't the same meaning as the string instrument. Mm -hmm. It actually means to unlock something or to oh. undo a restraint, really. Um, it's not yeah. when he says this song is a higum, it's like this song is me unlocking something in me, right? More or less? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah. makes this song way better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that was a little clever. I'm not gonna lie. That was that was pretty fun. Um, yeah. There's a lot of intricacies you could do with the the the, the Hanja, the the Chinese based characters in Korean, right? There's a lot you can do with that. Where you would put different characters, you have a totally different meaning. Right, right. Because especially with the way Chinese characters work and Mandarin characters work in Korean, a lot of words will sound the same but have completely different meanings sometimes. Like mm. this situation here. Um, uh, so I, yeah, I think the first thing the genius, uh, annotations mention on the chorus is like the string instrument. I, I, the main thing I think to me is, is unlocking the thing. Um, and I think most of the lyrics are about that too. And I noticed this is a big shift in the way he does music now. Um, the first two mixtapes from the lad, he was, it was a lot more braggadociousness you know just like mm, like this is me i'm successful mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm the world's biggest k-pop star which he is um this album shifts a lot more towards like conscious rap you know the, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the 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 a lot of the 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 project is dedicated to like societal critique and like freeing yourself of various different things that don't make you free if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, like flexing or YouTube. He was he was, he was talking about YouTube, yes. this guy. He, he mentioned uh, Slaves hey, to Flexing. Have you noticed that YouTube? the YouTube official channel did not comment on this music video? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mm. they don't they promote videos. They Shut don't up. always comment. They have in yeah. the last like couple weeks all the big ones. Mm. They've been commenting. Um, yeah. Look, I, I here's, here's what. It's, it's kind of funny because like if you look at a lot of rappers, they will start their career by doing like conscious rap. And then they'll slowly mm -hmm. shift, once they're successful, they'll slowly shift towards, look at the ice on my neck. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> he's look done the that. He begins with the ice on the neck. And then now he's doing, everyone's a slave to something in society. Um, I don't know. I, the lyrics themselves, I think it's not very depth, in, in depth. It's kind of shallow, not going to lie. Pretty general. I want to point out vague, something funny but, yeah. in this music video. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't know if he was acting, but those smoking scenes... Kind of authentic to me. No, <laughs> come on. And I want to lead this into a, the, one of the funniest stories Anita told me. I ain't going to out anyone. <laughs> um, but Anita once was in Korea for a summer, right? Yep. And she got to go to a music show filming. I also did that back in the day. I saw Psy before Gangnam Style, doing Gangnam Style before it popped off when I went. It was kind of cool. But Anita was there and she said at some point she saw some idols smoking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what happened? I don't remember who it was. No, yeah, it, we don't know who it was. She never I have no idea. Please do not speculate. But when we were exiting the the recording studio, right? Like they took yep, us. Yep. It was kind of weird. I don't know why they took us, but it took us towards like the back of the building, like a yeah, back yeah, exit. Yeah, like the set, the set exit, right? Yeah. With yeah. The big doors. Uh -huh. And I don't think we were meant to be there because it looked like there were people hanging like, out hanging out like performers hanging out and yeah some people were smoking and <laughs> hopefully they were of age hopefully i'm i'm guessing right but i, I don't know i don't know about august d please do not <laughs> speculate I make, I ain't making it, it was acting in this video i'm gonna yeah. just hit you with reality a vast majority of the korean males i know they all smoke a vast that majority yeah. That's, that's not. Bro, when I was, at I am an exception. I am. When I was at a, <laughs> when I was at Sogangde, like there was a designated smoking spot outside of the dorm. 
Twenty four yeah. seven people were smoking cigarettes there. Yeah. Twenty four seven. I do not recommend it. It is not good for your health. I think regardless of if it's good or bad for your health, I can't even just stomach the financial implications of smoking. <laughs> that, it's so that expensive too. these days. That it's too. like New York City, it's like twenty dollars a pack or something. Wait, it's what? Insane. Really? There it's over fifteen bucks. Wow. I wouldn't know, but um, that's all expensive. <laughs> Please. Yeah, dude. Yeah, New York City, it's like, do not I, I found start. it here. Not it's at least it. $15 a pack Wow. New York City. Um, minimum, there's a law in New York City, minimum is 13 bucks a pack. Wow. Yeah, it's way more expensive than you think. Um, uh, look, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. It's such a big part of, like, Korean culture at this point where, like, I mean, I don't really care if you do it or not. You're just... <laughs> yeah, I hold no judgment. I just think, yeah. you know, it's bad don't for your e- lungs. Don't expect your favorite idol to not smoke. That's all I'm going to say. Because there's a large chance it's the other way around. Um, Overall, uh, nice energy from Augustus mm-hmm. D, right? Augustus um, D, uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> kind of like it. I, I'm more into his hard-hitting stuff than I, I think some other people are. I really like it. I think it's just a vibe. I think it's oh, fun. Uh, I, 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 I did check out the larger project because I think there's a lot of nice tracks on it. Um, uh-huh. This is one of my lesser... Tracks? Fair, yeah, fair. This is one of those tracks. What would like. you recommend? I mean, that was actually pretty good. Go check that one out. Polar Nice, okay. really good too. Um, the intro is kind of good too. I'm getting a lot of emo rap uh, from the lad. A lot mm-hmm. of um, influences mm-hmm. of uh, Ash Island and Paul Blanco, who have been hard hitters of the that kind of aesthetic in K hip hop recently. Um, so if if you enjoy Ash Island, I would go check out some of the tracks off of D Day because I'm this is this sounds pretty cool. Alright, uh, final song this week, 17 with Super. They're uh, from Pledis. Last year's songs were World, Hot, and Rock With You. 17 has surpassed 4.6 million pre-order sales for the 10th oh mini album, F- FML. The album was the most pre-ordered album in Korean music history. And now that it's out, they hold the record for the artist with the highest first day and first week sales. They both occurred on the first day. They On the first day of sales, so this is in consumer's hand, right? The first number, the pre-order is 4.64 is how many that the um, that the stores were pre-ordering, right? How yeah. many mm. stock that the store wanted. This this other number on Hanto is how many sales were in the hands of of people, right? Right. 3,998,373 copies they sold on day one. Uh, wow. So on day one, number. they racked in about $40 million, if not more. That's crazy. I... I can't this is even. the best best selling K-pop album of all time. All time, for first first day and first week sales, this is the the best first day album. And it's it's not even a full length album; it's a mini album, six tracks. Yeah, mini album. Oh, yeah. Crazy. They sold yeah. four million on day one. That's incredible, and they got Le Seraphim coming back soon, which has already pre sold a million as well. Wow. Wow. Hive umbrella, hive umbrella, right? Hive, get that yeah, cash. Yeah. Ice is on Mr. Bong's neck. That's the okay, real so, life. Um, with this one, with Super, can you explain the 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 titles in English and Korean and what's going on here? Warren? I don't think it's a Korean thing. I, Sonogong, Wukong, right? Wukong. Yep. What did you he can play? League of Legends, Wukong. What? Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Who is the main character in Dragon Ball Z? Goku, who's inspired by Son Wukong. Goku. Yeah. When he becomes really strong, what do we call him? Super Saiyan. What's the first word of that? What you just said? <laughs> Super. There you go. Uh, is that is uh, that's basically? Okay. I, I that think so. I think so. I would think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Because Goku's basically a mix of like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, and Wukong, more or less. That's what he's pretty, the, he's inspired from. Um, pretty much. Yeah. And like the way the lyrics mention Wukong, I didn't think it was about the the original Wukong off of um the uh, the, the 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 tales of what's it, what's it called the thing Son of Gong's in Wukong's in. I oh, only Journey go- to the New West. Yeah, Journey to the New West. I don't think it's a reference to that. I a lot of it felt like a reference to Dragon Ball Z. Like at the yeah. end, they literally said the the last l- line in the entire lyrics is like, "This song is ah, the ending track to, uh, to this yeah. comic show, cartoon show." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's got to be that." I think. Yo, this song, I don't think it falls under the type of song which I would typically like, right? I don't like these really rhythmic just chorus, these like weird just instrumental choruses. But for some reason, this works really well. It's so hard. It's so hard, right? 
there's and this song has a lot of memorable parts. Like, I love my team. I love my crew. I think that's great. I love dude. my team. I love my crew. I, love my crew. I thought that's so memorable. Um, it's like, man, Seventeen's doing some good crap, right? Yo, yes. Anita, Anita, how, do you mm. like this one too? <laughs> Uh, I do. I I feel like I wasn't expecting this type of sound. Um, I think the what uh, the element that I found very interesting, and I think what makes this song so catchy and like, memorable, is the the percussion. Kit? I don't know what what it is exactly, but the rhythm that they have going on. I was trying to think like, what genre is it? really because it's not reggaeton it's something jersey house jersey house jersey house jersey, jersey house. house is that what it is this is called jersey i don't house. know yes mm. jersey club jersey house jersey club there's a bit of afro beat uh, in there as well um that's what i was thinking i was like it feels a little bit more wait it's based out of newark new jersey this jersey club sound yes it's the music of your neighborhood douglas be yeah, proud let's go <laughs> this pump this pump oh um, okay. yeah yeah this Jer- interpretation of it was very interesting i thought it was it was nice Jersey Club's, like, it's one of the popular genre trends of pop music overall right now. Um, and it's a close relative to Baltimore Club, which is, if you go back a couple of months, New Jeans did Ditto, which is Baltimore Club. And the same rhythm's there. Like, pump, 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 you know? It felt more like a, like a, I don't know, I felt like a four beats but they're spaced very differently so it has it almost yeah. sounds pump, like a pump 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 i like the, oh, the whoa, traditional whoa, sounds whoa. The dun, 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 i was dun, hearing dun, more dun. like a triple like dun, 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 dun. that was what oh, i was no, that hearing part, right. that part that, too there's that there's that's the too. afro beat part right right yeah, yeah, okay yeah. that's what i was hearing then. It, yeah. it kind of goes back and forth between afro beat and and, and jersey house um afro beat is, is the rhythm is very similar to Moonbathon, like pum 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 pum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think the backbone of the song was like more leaning towards Jersey Club, though. Uh, especially with the way it's so popular these days. Um, in the American in the American music sphere too. Like if you know, um, I just want to dance by uh, what's his name? I just want to dance. I just want to dance. You guys know that song? Oh, uh, Lucy? Uh, uh, Kai, no, Lucy, 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 Lucy Bird. Lucy Bird. Because Kai Sinat's in the music video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I, yeah. It was like one of the more popular genres of uh, music right now. Um, And this is, I think that's playing a role here. They, they said, they mentioned in the press release that there's like drill in here as well. Um, I hear it a little bit in the build up. But I'm not really counting that as drill. That's, that's nah, nah. Um. That, but what's really what really stood out to me was like that in in the intro, there's a there's this uh, synth that plays and it's like kind of oriental sounding, but it's very full. The I can't do it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it it makes everything feel very grand. It feels epic, that is. so yeah. epic without. Can we talk about, yeah, keep on Yeah, a lot of K-pop tracks do this thing where they'll throw on 50 different instruments to make it sound epic. And you end up in a situation where it just sounds very convoluted and very messy. Here, simple. One instrument. Boom. Epic. Right off the bat. Right off the gate. It's 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 dope. And and the members do a great job of being like performers on top of that. Um as yeah. The thing that was most interesting to me is I need to I need to watch the behind the scenes of this music video shooting. The set is crazy town. Oh, is it not? Dude, yeah. Is this like mm. a hotel outside of it or something? Like what is this building? And is it I I was thinking is this is it actually this big or is there CGI in play and like cuz it's it's an, it's an incredible set that they're on. Honestly, I think it's a location probably. Is it a location? And then they also have the giant blocks like that look like cereal boxes on the side, you know? Okay. They got those ones too. Yeah. Pillars. Like, pillars. Yeah, they got those cereal pillars. boxes. That makes sense. And then they ha- it looks like it's all carpeted though. But how if it's outside, right? It doesn't make sense. See, so. I, it doesn't make sense because I thought it was in a studio. Then I saw how big the building is in the background. I'm is like, there's the, no is way. Is it like the inside of a, ho- of a conference hall or something? Maybe. And it's actually inside? I've been trying to figure this out. I have no clue. Here's the thing. It's that one. There's only one set. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's, one, it's great one that there's location. one set. It's so efficient. I agree. Yeah? Honestly, I feel like that was the smartest decision for this type of song because I think it 
it really brings the focus to the performance yes. where you're not switching yes. between shots know. and like lighting and stuff. I think it did it did what it had to do for the choreo, which I think I think was as always very very good. It fit the vibe. Um, I'm always impressed with their their um, their formations, how they move people from there to the other place. I, I don't know. I really like how they utilize the space. And they make they kept, they kept it simple. I feel like the more you add on, the more difficult it is to really see what's going on with the choreography. So I like that decision. This is like a very expensive music video, but they efficiently spent the money. You know what I mean? Mm. Like they oh, didn't yeah. just spend money for the sake of it. They got one set. They're gonna be we're gonna focus this because honestly, if you showed this to someone, they might think it's a performance video of it, right? But it just works. It works for some reason. Mm. We, there's nothing confusing. You get what's going on. It, it, like the song makes sense. They they bring in all these backup dancers, so it feels very epic. Just mm-hmm. a fantastic package right here. Um, I have a new favorite member of this group. Honestly, Whoa. who was it before? I I really didn't have one. I was just saying oh, okay. it was Musugan for a while. Mm-hmm. But Hoshi's definitely my favorite member of this group. <laughs> nice. The reasoning is funny though. He's a, a Ujingi. He's a crybaby. <laughs> What? <laughs> there's, there's two <laughs> videos that I watch which are absolutely hilarious. He went on Youngji's um oh, drinking I've show. Oh, I seen clips of that. <laughs> and at one point, he's he's he gets very drunk on that show, okay. right? Okay. Uh-huh. And at one point, he's he's talking about how much he loves Pletus and just starts crying. What? <laughs> it's, oh, no. He's like they supported us when we were nothing, and then he just loses it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's supposed to be sad, but it's so funny. Oh man, he gets emotional. And then there's another video I saw of them. They're they're singing at um they're at like a restaurant. You know how sometimes they record videos when they're when they're like drink at a restaurant and they sing. You know, there's those oh, type of yeah, shows. Yeah. yeah, they were very popular like a couple years ago, where they would like literally plan it that they're gonna eat and then sing while they're eating dinner. Right. 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 There's clips of Hoshi getting drunker and drunker and crying more and more, even oh, though everyone no. else is laughing and having a good time. He's just crying. He's this is a, he's a, that's, I guess that's what he does when you're when, when he's drunk. Oh, he's a he's a he gets emotional when he's drunk. I looked it up oh. apparently. He's an he's, a, he's an emotional drunk, and it's it's just so funny because he's like crying the whole time. Oh. <laughs> It's okay. I get it. I get it. I'm also an emotional person when I'm drunk. So I, oh, I yeah. But I was watching it. It's just <laughs> so funny to me the whole time. So, yeah, yeah. Warren, if you, if you watch the clip I sent you at like 15 seconds in, he just loses it while everyone else is having like a fantastic oh. time. Oh, good Lord. It's so funny. I don't know. Um, that, that being said, yeah, he's definitely my favorite member now. I've also, I also liked him a lot during the uh, Busok Soon promotions as well. So mm, that's another really great thing. dancer. Not just because he cries a lot. Um, <laughs> that'd be weird. Um, that being said, I think the the Hybe Machine is doing a fantastic job with this group. I think they are doing so well. Um, particularly, the the thing I always like to talk about is if we would have imagined how the um hype artists would be doing in the absence of in the the bts musical hiatus we were all very concerned you know the stock dipped mm-hmm. when they announced it but they're doing absolutely fine they got new jeans going 17 la seraphim it hyping txt they're all doing good like it, it's 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 amazing what they're doing as a whole what are you worried about i'm not worried anymore <laughs> no dude this is this is fantastic Seventeen, I think, because BTS is in the musical hiatus. I think objectively, Seventeen is the biggest boy group now, right? They have to be. Look, they I literally know. hold the literal record, yeah. the, record for the literal right? most they, they, amount of albums. Who else do you want to put at this point? Man, I would be down. To, I should have bought tickets for that. Seventeen's having a tour, right, Anita? Aren't they? I thought they did. They did already. Doing another one. Yeah. Yeah. If they do another one, I might have to go see it because it seems very compelling. Seems like I'll have a good time. <laughs> They have a lot of famous songs that I know. Yeah. I like my team. Good I like my crew. Oh no, it's it dude, it's it's in uh April they're coming. Oh, oh, oh okay. so they're do- they're still in The yeah, April's Consumers. now. Uh, oh. There's only a week left of April. Oh no, not April. April. What's eight? August. It's in August. <laughs> oh I think. So you mixed oh, up yeah. April with August? Am I even reading this right? 
Uh, oh, wait, no, this happened last year. Yeah, you're right. Bro, okay, that's year. what I thought. What are you <laughs> doing? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <sighs> Please tour again. I, I buy a ticket. I buy a ticket. Um, <laughs> yeah, do we have anything else to say about Super? It was very nice Super. Song. Good song. Good song. Other releases include So You with Farewell Every Day, Drippin' with Seven Sins, um, One Wee's Gyok with Time Machine uh, 21... 2000... How do, I, how do I say that date? 2100. 2100. Bro. Uh, Ryusu Jung with Grabby Girl. Interesting name there. Oh My Girl with Miracle, which was their 8th anniversary song. Um, Psychers with Rockstar. That's the uh, the 80s brother group. The new one. Yeah. That's, yeah, that yeah. Came out. Mm -hmm. Blitzers with Macarena. They actually sort of reference eh, Macarena. Sort of. Wow. Like, <laughs> the beat's a tiny bit like it. Like You could tell what they were going oh, for. Oh, boy. And then August D, uh, he released the B-side. How do I pronounce this one, Warren? Amygdala. Amygdala. Amygdala, yes. Okay. Spice King, last week, 231. Ives I Am, picked up first crown. Second place, A-Pink D&D. Third place, Tempest Dangerous. Uh, new candidates this week are Alice Showdown, August D. Higgum, 17 Super. Third place, I got Tempest. Got Tempest. Nice. Still enjoying that song. The big debate for me was do I put Ive in first place again? Or do I put 17? Mm. That's my life. I'm going to put 17 in first place. Oh! Wow. I really like this I song, but starting to get a little sick of it, to be honest. I, I Maybe I listen to it too much. I listen to it all the time. There is um That's Warren. There's a totally live stage now, so you could hear the vocals live. Yeah. Um, is it's it? it's one of the ones where they that that place where they perform with the band behind them. Okay. It now exists. So oh, you should I'm check that one out. Check that out because that is a very high pitched song. Honestly, they completely do it comfortably, which oh, was wow. very surprising to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I th I think for me it's like two. We've listened to the song like two weeks. I'm gonna vote for the 17 song. Boom. Nice. Okay, for me, very similar chart. Um, third place, I also have Tempest. Um, I've been enjoying the song. I think it's very nice. Um, Hanbin's vocals, very nice. Really glad you got to work on this project with this group. Um, yeah. Is I'm that third place? Third yes, place? Third, third place. Third place Tempest? Okay. Second place... <sighs> It went down a spot, but I still really like D and D. Damn, Anita. Pink. Damn. It's in second place now. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I really like. I like A Pink. I miss them. I liked the vocals. What most do you mean you missed them? They came back two weeks ago. No, I mean before they had come back. Oh, okay. I'm enjoying their promotions right now. Okay, you don't miss them um, anymore now that they are back. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay I'm good. Yes. Okay. First place, I'm also going to give it to 17. 17 right here. Yes. Uh, I I really, I like the performance aspect for it. I'm looking forward to the live stages for this song in particular. Um, I think it's a save, but the chorus is also really nice. I think they did a good balance of using that sort of like kind of drop, but then also bringing the energy back at the second half. So it's not a complete downturn. Um so I, I like I like that they did that. It was nice. I love my team. I love my crew. Super is number one on my chart as well. Ooh. What more can you ask for? It's a good song. It's got a dope ass chorus and a really great production. Members do a great job. Wasn't a, the world's biggest fan of the rap on the second verse, but I believe that's the first time he's rapping overall. So I'll let it pass. I'll let the man slide. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just really good. Um, I also was kind of in the boat with Doug. Uh, I really like I Am, but I'm giving it second only because it's it's been on my chart for a couple weeks now. Um, I'm mm -hmm. still liking it. I'm not sick of it yet, but it's the novelty's worn off a little bit, you know? I feel like the problem with that song is there's no, like, real stickiness. There's no, like, part where you're like, narcissistic, my god, I love it, you know? like That's Or, like, love, life, shoot life, that, go love, love, love dive, me, me, you know? Game. Really? It's just, I feel like the song's just a little more mopey than the other ones. 
Mopey. Hmm. I don't know if mopey would be the word I use. It is a little... I don't know. Okay, never mind. I can't think of a better word. What do you I, got in third, Martin? I kind of struggled with the third place, not going to lie. But one song that was not even on my Spotify playlist, but I do return to still, is uh, it's a bit of a surprise for me even. Uh, Giddy by Kepler. Oh, Whoa, giddy, giddy, giddy. I'll oh, think. yes. You did like giddy, yes. I, I don't know what keeps drawing me back. This one along with okay, the... To, to be fair. Yeah? I've been watching a lot of the, the giddy TikToks from them. <laughs> I haven't had a single one on my thing, on my For You page, so I don't even know what it is. What? Um, Giddy along with Up, great songs, just, just back and forth. Uh, so I've been listening to the heck out of those three songs. Those, but That would be my chart, uh, Super I Am, and then Giddy. Okay, uh, go to gang, 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 gang. They had uh, I've I Am, first place by a lot. 45 points. Look at that. Whoa. Second place, August D. Hagum with 23. With Ooh. just 22, third place, Super by 17. Whoa. All right. As a result, uh, we have a tie for third place this week, August D. and A-Pink via Anita's vote. <laughs> there. Let's go. They got three points each. Um, Second place is I've, I am with 11 and picking up their first crown this week with 16 points. 17's super, so they dethroned Ive over there. So it looks like um, I am will not be entering the uh, Hall of Spice. Eh. But if super enters, I wouldn't complain. I wouldn't uh, complain. Finally, though, we're at music show winners. Anita hit us with them. Yes, uh, not to worry. Ive has been winning a lot with I am. They had a grand slam, which means they won on the show, show champion, M Countdown, Music Bang, Show Music Core, and Inkigayo. And have a total of six wins with this comeback. Hey, yo. Congrats to them. Hey, yo. So this is a legitimate Grand Slam or a full Grand Slam. So, you know, Jisoo had one last week, but she was missing oh, yeah, one of the yeah. shows because they didn't mm. broadcast. This is a true Grand Slam. All six shows. They got all of them. Um, additionally, only two days ago, they started to pick up perfect all kills because they had to wait for, the I think, the weekly YouTube chart to update because they were blocking themselves with Kitsch for a while. Oh. But, yeah, so <laughs> that, that happened there. Um, I think in terms of news, so right here, they're the first group um, in history to score perfect all kills with two different songs within three weeks. Wow. wow. Within three weeks. Wow. So, so that has never happened record. before where like within three weeks uh, they've had two different songs, perfect all kills. That is pretty interesting there. All right. Uh, that wraps up part one, episode 233. We'll be back uh, with some news and events. See you guys then. Top Nation, this is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutalk or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutalk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. Alright, uh, we are back at it with part two. So you talk episode 233. We're going to cover some news and events from the past week. The first one, the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism has passed the Isungi Crisis Prevention Act. So there's a couple mm. things involved in this. The first one, entertainment companies are required to disclose earnings to celebrities at least once a year and whenever the artist requests. So this is basically, it's entitled the Isungi Act because of this one. Um, If you aren't aware... Basically, the company he was at was telling him, they were gaslighting him, that his music career made no money, right? Is what they were telling him. Yes. When in fact, it was making millions of dollars. So they withheld like like $3 million from him in the past 10 years or something Dang. like that. Yeah. And he's on record saying that once he gets the money, which they're having to pay to him, he's going to donate it all. So Whoa. positive karma there. Um, I'm, glad. The other, I'm glad. The other portion here, number one. Like having the um, what is it? Uh, the, the 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 transparency for finances, I think, is very important for K-pop idols, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Because 
the way it, it, the the idol system is tech, it's like it's predatory the way they do all of like you owe money to them still for things 100%. right things like that yeah. whatever the good companies don't let you have debt when you start out right that, that's what the smart companies do because they see it as an investment but it's mostly the, the 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 poorer companies that are like you owe us for everything we've ever paid for you right um mm. but i think it's good that these are idols will now have um more transparency in what the finances actually look like and like why are we still in debt well they're gonna have to explain it to you right um so that's something there i'm, I'm looking the up other some... part oh yeah I don't keep on warning. No, no, no. You, you should go, and I'll go after. The second part is minors. There's a huge thing in this act about minors in the entertainment industry. So the first mm. one, minors will not be able to work more than seven hours a day. So additionally, companies are no longer allowed to let minors drop out of school or force them to excessively manage their appearance. Mm. Abuse, uh, which comes in verbal, sexual, or physical, will be investiga- investigated by the ministry itself. And contracts are required to include length, settlement methods, and cost deduction methods as well. Uh, more you. or less, other things, minors under 12 can only work 24 hours a week with a maximum of 6 hours a day. Minors between 12 to 15 can only work 30 hours a week with a maximum of 7 hours a day. And minors 15 plus can only work 35 hours a week with a maximum of 7 hours a day. Oh, mm, okay. They lost me a little bit there. Yeah, 35 hours is <laughs> it's a lot. That's no, not like a full-time job, right? The, the, I mean, honestly, my my stance in, like, minors in the industry, right, has been, like, you shouldn't, if you couldn't have a job, like, you couldn't do a regular job below a certain age, then I don't think you should be able to be put under the industry at the also, same level, I, I feel like there's ways they can skirt this last thing with the hours. Yeah. Like they could say, "Well, we were traveling; they weren't working." You know, like yeah. things like that. Um, um that's iffy, but I mean, I, mean, I guess it's a step. Yeah, you. I mean, I think we'll have to actually read what the actual law says in order to, you know, see where they can skirt the rules there. Um, to provide a little bit of context, thirty-five per week. That is a lot less than the, I guess, the overall national average of how many hours That's people true. work per yeah. week. Because in America, 40 hours per week is like the, you know, average office job. Um, realistic in, in Korea, you're thinking like something closer to like 50, 60. Um, yeah. There's a lot of word, go, you know, a lot of talk going around 69 work hour weeks these days. Oh which my is God. Awful. It's got awful. So um, who, who knows what's going on? I guess compared to that, 35 is a very low number. So providing a little bit of context there. Um, also. All right. Oh, you got more? more? Uh, not anything too crazy. Um, <laughs> just... just a lot of the news articles we cover will mention stuff like Lee Sun Gi Crisis Prevention Act. Um, that's not the that's actual, not the real name. That's not that's the real name. The, that's just what the media is calling right, it. Right, right, right. Just, just want to make sure people understand. That's what the Korean media likes to do. We're playing along with that. This is like not the name of the real law. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Next thing. Hive says Weavers will launch Weavers DM next week. Mm? A private chat service where fans can exchange direct messages with their beloved artists just like they do with friends. Oh, bubble, no, bubble, bubble. Fans can also receive photo, videos, and emojis from their favorite artists and users can purchase the service through Jelly, an official digital currency of Weavers according to Hype. Uh, phoning! This, <coughs> phoning! How is bubble! This, how, yeah, how is this different than Bubble? I don't know, but they're, they're, they're launching their uh, equivalent of it. Um, They also said that they have like a sophisticated AI that if you start cursing at the idol, they're just going to ban you. <laughs> like that. They said there's an AI, like an anti-security, there, there's a security AI, like Good. an anti-anti um, features built in. Um, So there's Good. that. Next mm. one, G-Idol finally coming to Weaver. So they have picked, Cube has now decided where they are falling in this um in this thing. So they will be going to Weaver. So that's pretty exciting if you're a G-Idol fan. Okay. This is the big thing I wanted to talk about. Queendom Puzzle. Oh, we just ended Boys Planet. We're going to talk about it in the, uh, the the after show, right? Anina, I'm going to talk about Boys Planet. Mm-hmm. The next big show that's going to come up is Queendom Puzzle, right? This is going to be a bloodbath. Essentially, the format of the show is they're going to bring on 24 debuted idols, right? Active oh. idols? I wouldn't say like a lot of them are active, but the, based on the lineups we're seeing, it seems more like idols who've had a career already who are on the downturn, you know, okay, like okay. little, 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 like other than a couple exceptions, these are like kids who've done their thing already, you know, Okay. they, st- they okay. still want to be in the idol game. Okay. There's going to be 28 kids and it seems like from the image down here, they're going to break it down to seven kids at the end. Okay. 
Okay. So they have started to announce contestants. We have the first eight. Yeon from CLC. Mm. Ayan from Le Boom. From La Boom. Le Boom. What am I saying there? La Boom. K from Lovelies. What? Jui from mm. Momoland. Cheon, the soloist who is formerly of Eyes One. Mm? Miru from uh, NMB48, mm. who was on uh, Pro48. And then we have uh, Huisa and Rina from Haiki One, which is like a rookie group. So that everyone was shocked about that one. Huh. Additionally, weekly members will also participate, <gasps> but M- Mnet did not specify which ones. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? What is the sign up? This, uh, kinda, this is this is crazy, is it not? It is yes. honestly. I mean, I get the like the purpose behind it. I'm guessing is to like bring into the limelight like maybe people that were not yeah or like people who want to have more of an idol right. career, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah currently maybe they want to see a rise in popularity i can see that i understand that i just don't know if individually especially if, like for some of these people there's they might be in a group or like they were associated with the group so i don't know okay to be uh, fair clc is done right La Boom is done. That's true. Lovelies is done. Momoland is done. Eyes right. one ended. I I don't I think I don't know what's going on with NMV48. And High Key One, that's the one that sticks out to me, which is like a yeah. rookie group. Um and weekly, honestly, I think we could all objectively say um weekly ain't doing too hot at the moment, right? They're not um, doing great, but like there's still a group. Right? Did you okay, here's a fun fact. Did you know this is Cheon's fifth competition show? Oh my god. That's crazy. Are you kidding? She did Superstar K, right? Yes. Then she did um, the show to get onto twice. 16. Right? 16. Then she did produce. Then she did Street Woman Fighter. Oh, and yes, now she's she doing Queendom Puzzle. Why? <laughs> this uh, is her fifth competition show. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? It, just proof of how difficult this industry is, you know? Um uh, something else that's interesting is so this is gonna be on Mnet, obviously, right? right. Um, I think this show is gonna directly compete with another competition show that's gonna come out. Uh, mm-hmm. There's one that's going to be on SBS, I believe. I'm trying to find. I wrote it today, but uh, that, uh, I can't really find where I started to talk about it on the Discord. But SBS will also have a competition show going, mm. and people are like. I, everyone's gonna just watch Queendom Puzzle instead is the main thing people are saying, right? So, uh, there it looks like they're uh producing what is called Universe Ticket. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, they're gonna have like a traditional girl group survival show uh, on SBS, mm. and people are like, well, everyone's just gonna watch Queendom Puzzle because it's people we know. I'm gonna be real with you. SBS doesn't have a great level of relevance with people of our generation and the folks younger, so um. I don't but think this lineup mm. is kind of crazy, is it not? Yeon, Cheon, Miru? <laughs> Miru's the most shocking, is it not? Miru's com- she's completely shocking to me. She's ha- she is has she- a solo career in Japan right now. Oh, Tom. she does? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. She's okay. So it looks like a- less than a year ago, about 300 days ago, she did a single debut in 2022, and that was the last thing she did by herself. Um, but actually, she's like one of the pillars of NMB, right? Oh, she's also done a solo single in November. No, no, she graduated in 2021. Okay, so she's a free agent, right? Well, she has a company. Okay, okay. Well, I'm saying like she's not attached to the 48 system. No, she's right? not a part of the 48 system anymore. So, oh, other yeah. than high key yeah. and with the six members above, it kind of makes sense. Right, right, because. I was concerned, like you, Anita, I was really, really concerned about how, what this means for existing fandoms. For like, groups, mm-hmm. like, weekly. something growth of groups, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But if they're focusing on members of groups that have already kind of... Done their thing. Right, done their mm-hmm. seven-year, five-year thing, you know, maybe this isn't too bad, you know? The idea of giving people a second chance is, like, not the craziest I'm idea, you know? I'm concerned that this is just going to open up the fan wars real, real hard. Yeah, you know, just... If this is a straight popularity vote, <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna be a bloodbath. Dude, right? it's an end of show, so of course it's gonna be a straight popularity vote. What are you talking about? Come hey, on. I here's the thing. I didn't watch like the last two seasons of Queen uh, Queendom Kingdom, right? I'm mm-hmm. definitely gonna be watching this. I thought you watched the last two seasons of Kingdom and Queendom. 
No, I really didn't. Not that much. We like, literally talked about it on the show. Doug, what are you doing? <laughs> no, no. This this season this, this season that Uju Sonyo won, I didn't watch. Oh, Queendom Two. Oh yeah, never mind. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, I did yeah, not yeah. watch Queendom Two. Yeah, 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 never I did mind, not watch mind. it. Yeah. I, so I'm very excited about this though, because you know I think this, should, this is gonna be very interesting. Twenty eight uh, kids, and it's not group based anymore. It's twenty eight kids fighting for seven spots. A uh, bit of a side fun fact. Uh, last week there were reports that former Eyes One members Yabuki Nako and Honda hey, Hitsumi. What do you What do you think's show? next, dude? What do you think's next? Okay, never mind. You already have it. <laughs> so last week, news sources stated that Nako and, Hito- and Hitomi would be participating in Queendom Puzzle. Uh, Nako recently graduated from HK248. Well, Hitomi's like a top five member of AKB at the moment. So people were like, that doesn't make any sense. No, it was confirmed. They're not They're not doing it. They're not doing it. Um... So they, they will not be um, on the show, which is kind of sad. I think the I think if they had been on the show, I think these two would 100% make it regardless of what happens because of oh, the popularity. Wait. No doubt, um, yeah. So that happened there. Additionally... Taeyeon is back as the host. She hosted Queendom 2. Oh, nice. And now she will be hosting Puzzle. So people are excited about that because, you know, everyone likes Taeyeon. Um, So that's Queendom Puzzle. I think it is happening in June. So we have another month. Okay. They have to release, uh like, a couple more batches of contestants. It should be exciting, though, for sure. Next thing. So this happened five days ago. Uh, 50-50. Top 60 on Billboard Hot 100. Wow. Whoa. That's incredible, is it not? Very nice for it's, them. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. That's crazy. I think they were literally 60th place. So we'll have to see because I think in two more days the next chart comes out. So we'll see if they went any higher or not. Well, I mean, I really hope they keep going up because, like, this is proof that good music gets you places. You know? Yes. Very exciting. Um. Yeah. So they uh, it's the highest peak rank for a song in the fourth generation. Um. New Jeans OMG went at 74. So this is already. Heard it better than that one. Yo. Oh. Incredible. I hear it a lot. Goodbye. In the TikToks. Goodbye, New Jeans. Hello, 50-50. Uh, Next one is a bit of a spoiler for the competition show Peak Time, but I don't know how many people are watching it. So you have like five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, before I spoil it. I'm going to spoil it now. So Vanner won Peak Time. Peak Time was a program on JTBC. Um, It featured like... A different group for each hour of the day so they were like 24 i would call like uh not as popular boy groups on the show like dkb kingdom ghost nine 24k Ooh. so some boy groups you might have heard before so they all competed on the show banner ended up winning the judge pool was actually kind of stacked hyun j park uh sungyu igugang uh mino ryan jun was on this tiffany Moonbyo. so they had a decent amount of guests isungi hosted it but like i don't think it, it didn't get good ratings Banner won it, so congratulations mm. to them. Congrats, congrats. Good for them. Uh, last two, Luda. So you know how she left Uju Sonyo? So she has signed an exclusive contract with IHQ, also known as Cytus. So we, I've heard of that name before. Mm. So that started on April 17th. Uh, she currently appears as the main character of Rinza Noodle House, a web drama, which is on IHQ's online platform, Baba Yo, I guess. I think that's what you did. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. She's currently heavy in the acting, is what is she is doing there. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. IHQ Cytus, formerly known as Cytus, is like a big, big um, acting label. So, makes sense. How could you not support her? Look, it's Luda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lastly, Victon. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty donezo, to, to be honest here. So, Dohanse, Byungchan, and Subin are all leaving ISC Entertainment following their contract expiration so uh sungu sungshik and sejun are all in the military so they will retain under isc at the moment but we don't know what's going to happen once they come back so oh man uh, oh. i would say it's essentially donezo for them if i had to guess mm. yeah well all right so that's the news um next week though Heyang, epics woods Exonary heroes la seraphim yo Move. Yo, yo, I'm expecting to cover Taeyong Woods and La Seraphim, right? I would assume so, right? That would right? be a good lineup, yeah. Pretty excited, we like all those artists. Um, So that wraps up uh, part two, so we talk episode 233. After the break, uh, Anita and I are just going to talk about the uh, finale of Boy's Planet. So if you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching. Um, If you want to be spoiled and want to listen to us talk about it, stick around. We'll see you guys then. Three, two, one. Special shoutouts to our Fiesta patrons. Bagel, based Mina, 
Brian, Chad O, Delmonic, Ellie, Irvtron, Flacco Louie, Genki Boy, Okumama, Honey Pool, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toy, Luke Daniel, NJ Park, Tear. Thank you. Special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Max, No Bias Luna, Tuggles, and Wolf297. All right, uh, we're in the after show of Soju Talk episode 233. We're going to talk about Young's Men's Celestial Body. No, 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 boy, boy's, planet. boys Planet. Boys yeah, Planet, yeah, Boys Planet. Boys planet. <laughs> so we had the finale. Um, clearly, this is a spoiler zone, so don't be a dumb dumb. Get out of here if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, Warren, move the slide. Oh, uh, uh, next slide. Okay, they announced the name uh, Zero Base One. That's, which, the, name. that's the name of the group. And it looks like that person graphic design is their their life they, when they made that one or whatever that <laughs> meme is. The base <laughs> design is my passion. They, I thought like they honestly changed the A to a one, but that's like what they're going for. It's it's stupid. This name is horrendous, right? Uh, I mean, I I feel like the design of the name right makes sense to me. Like I see a zero base one. The A is supposed to be a one. So when you take the Z and the B, you get the one. At the end, I just feel like the name itself does. I'm not Z, quite sure what the explanation was for ZB1 it. ZB1 is weird. Like, it's like Zany Brainy, which was a store <laughs> growing up I used to go to. What? It was a store, like, it had science stuff called Zany Brainy. Zany Brainy? Oh, I've never yeah. heard of this. I've never heard of this. It was a retail chain in the 90s. Of course, you didn't. It stopped in 2003. Yeah, okay, I'm old. Oh. But, um. <laughs> Zero Face What? You could even tell the audience thought it was ass. You could tell that June didn't even remember it when he gave his speech. They asked, like, Li- uh, Lip J what she thought of it. She's like, Zero Base Y! <laughs> and then they asked PH1. He's like, Wanna One? PH1? Zero Base One? <laughs> That's what he said, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, dude, what the heck?" Dude, I saw, I saw, I saw clips of like people watching the final episode in like a theater in like a CGV. Uh-huh. And like they 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 showed this the 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 announcement clip of like the you know the cool letters and whatnot, and the audience was like, ah, ah, I ship it, ah. <laughs> like, oh, oh fuck, what is this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long name, so I get I get why they're trying to do like the ZB one. Well, actually, they're calling it ZB one. Just for full reference, uh, in Korean Twitter, it was like trending after. It was like the first, the the top trending was like ZB1, my ass, and then sucks ass, oh, and no. then ZB boy. Oh and no. Then, and then Park Crime being debut. Yeah. It was. They should have just called the group uh, Uranus. You know, that's what they should have called it with a nine instead of an A. No. Yes. I feel yes. like, honestly, I feel like they don't need the word base. Like, zero one's pretty cool. I thought they should have called the group Apollo with a nine instead of an A. But how are you gonna put the word one in there? I don't know. Why does it I don't think one? it's necessary. I hate this nomenclature that they're going with. It's so stupid. Call it here. It could have been zero zero okay. one. One oh one was bad. X one I kinda I was okay with X one. How about, about Zero? Zero <laughs> <laughs> This sounds like Jerome, dude. Zero. <laughs> Dude, uh, they should have just stuck with. I agree with Doug. I think they should have stuck with the the celestial theme. theming I think, space. Anita, would you like Apollo? I thought that Apollo would have been fun. fine. Yeah. Yeah. How about with a, with, a, with a nine instead of an A? How about Apollo one? I uh, sure. How about how about that, a, even, that makes sense too? A, a pol- put a nine. Apollo put a nine. In, put a nine instead of the A. Beginning. How do you? How do you? What? Apollo. That makes no Apollo. sense, dude. Apollo. No, that's nine Pallone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is the name of one of like my congress, my local congressman. Oh, is she? Or he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Well, it's zero base one, so you can't it's say anything. Whatever. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Um. Then we had a jelly pop. 
Uh, I love this song. This was the better of the two, clearly. Okay. It um, was a it's a bop. I've been listening to it all week. People were wondering this week if they could vote for it instead of the songs we covered. That's what people were asking. You know what? Exactly. Um, it was so good. It got nine points. And that is for a song that's not an option on the poll, that is very high. Let me just put it that way. It, it was a bop. I thought it the was dance a was a little too cluttered. That you know, the pop 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 that part, Anina. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um but that being said, the members were Hui, Zhang Hao, Jay, Kim, Den Hanbin, Matthew, Songon, uh, uh, Gum Jun Hyun, and Gonuk were in this group. Mm-hmm. This was a good grouping. Vocals um, were really nice. And then uh, Zhang Hao had the center in this one. This was a very good song. Go to the very other one. Very good more. center, too. Go to the next one. We had Hot Summer. This was a bad song. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe it. It was a good um uh, it's not that I didn't dislike it that much. It's just that it felt very, like one no, like it wasn't really going places. <laughs> this one had Jung, Jongu, uh, Hanbin, Keita, Tere, jo- uh, Donghyun, Ricky, Gyuvin, and Yujin. The other group was better. Let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> That's not what I said, Warren. <laughs> yes, Hot Summer by FX was right. And then of course, really of course, Song Hanbin got the center. Uh, yes, yes. Look, look, good, good looking man. Good looking man. Good looking dude. Yeah. Good looking man. All right. Go to the next thing. What happened next? We right. the well, the results came out. Oh, there was a ballot too. It was okay. Oh, was there a ballot? Oh, the okay. results came out. Results came out. Let's go through what happened in the results. Um, go to the bottom row first. So the first thing that I got announced, go to the, go to the other kid. We hit, we hit that one last. Go to eighth. Go to eighth. Go eighth, 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 first. eighth place. Yeah. Okay. Jiyoon got eighth, which was a little surprising. I thought he was like top four lock, right? Yeah. Uh, I think... I don't even remember off the top of my head what I have him as, but it was like fifth at most, like at lowest, right? Anita, you had him at sixth. At six? Never mind. Yeah. I didn't think it would be that low, and the moment he was announced as eighth, I knew that. I threw something was up. Something Something happened here. Something happened. (laughs) Okay, so that that was that was happened, and then we had seventh, which was Cuban, which I was like. All right, I could see that. I actually I had him in seventh too. in my thing, so he was that consistently was sort of around there. Mm. So this is not shock, not not, not shocking. Not shocked here. Um, the only thing that was shocking at this point for me was that oh, we're getting minimum three Yehuas, right? Ooh. At this point, yeah. At least that's that's what I had thought at this point. Um, then we had sixth place, right? Sixth place, yeah. Tede. This made sense. Like we were like, I thought right. this was low. Yeah, Anita thought it was low. I I thought he honestly, yeah, it was, I thought he was probably top four either um, as well. But like, we I knew he was gonna get in the group, right, yes. in some capacity. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it's kind of expected. We all kind of thought Teddy was gonna win. Um, hey, they got a vocalist, main vocal, right? Yay. Right, right. He's gotta be. <laughs> Someone can sing now. And fifth place is where the wheels start falling Whoa. off. Whoa! This. Yeah, did not. We had did not see this Gunuk coming at all. Go from twelfth to fifth. That push. That's a seven rank rise. We did not see. We did not see that the one pick was going to be that strong for Gunuk. Honestly, yeah, that was insane. But we were like, oh my god. But at the I time, think, mm-hmm. we were still thinking. We still have like we we always thought that we had room for one surprise pick. Right, that was the the conventional wisdom that oh. we thought. Eight kids, of which I'm going to name the eight that we thought. We thought that it was going to be Song Hanbin, Yujin, Zhang Hao, Tere, Keita, Jiung, Yuvin, and Matthew, right? Those were the For most sure. likely eight. So yeah. when we had Gunuk, I was like, all right, well, that's the, the surprise, right? Uh-huh. Then fourth place hit. And we have And Ricky. then I was very concerned. No. Because Ricky, we thought Ricky just had a spike in the last... um. Round. We thought that this yeah. was like uh, like outside of the norm. We thought he was gonna regress back to like maybe twelfth to fourteenth place where 12, he'd been yeah. somewhere around there, eleventh to fourteenth, somewhere in that region. And I mean, honestly, when this was announced, because I, I mean, I knew his one pick power was pretty good, and that's why I predicted that he would be like the surprise top nine. I I didn't think he would be that high. And I didn't expect Konuk to be up there as well. Which Once you have like, this, you we don't have enough kid, spots. One of those kids wasn't going to make it. I thought and between the ones stressed. who were left, I thought either Matthew, Keta. I thought it was one of those two wasn't going to make it. I thought Yujin might not make it. You thought Yujin might make it. Okay, so then we got third, right? 
And this is where it all hit the fan. Yo, when Matthew <laughs> yo. placed third. Yo. And he, he went from ninth to third. I knew he was going to go up. I didn't know he was going to go up to third. He shot up. And then yeah. we're like, oh, my God. There's it, Hanbin and Zhang Hao have to be one and two. Right? So they're one and two. So then we were like, it has to be Keita or Yujin getting out of this group. Which th- which was nowhere in my realm of possibility. I thought both of them were going to make it for sure. Like, yeah. very secure. Because I my logic was... Hita's going to get all the Japanese votes, so he's going to make the group. Even though he has terrible Korean numbers, I thought he was going to make it. And then Yujin was the golden Mangne, so we thought, you know, he's mm. going to make it at some point, right? Um, then we they brought up the top two contestants, and we were all sitting there going, oh my god, Minhyun, why are you dragging this out so much? It was horrendous. <laughs> it was so bad. Warren, here's a quick aside for the future. When they got to pick nine, which is supposed to be the most sus- suspenseful, they ran out of broadcast time and just had to announce it. Oh... It was so quick. They didn't even give candidates. They just said, this kid's ninth. That's kind of boring. Yeah. Why would you do they that? Ran, cause the broadcast was about to, to co- go over four hours at that it point. It was long. Dude, why did they... So it's we got the first show. two kids up. We got one and two. We had Hanbin and we had Zhang Hao. And somehow, Zhang Hao beat Hanbin and got first place, which was oh my god, unexpected. What was, wait, can we see the point difference? He had about two million, and Humbin is you know, points. over five percent lower. Wow! This was shocking, honestly. Yeah, this was shocking because Humbin had been number one the entire show, the All entire show. elimination rounds. Yeah, yeah. We have our first foreigner win one of the Pru series uh, shows. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, deserve too. I think Zhang Hao is really good. And Center, that means really good performance. Zhang Hao is getting a solo song on the first yeah, album. Yeah, solo, solo debut. This everyone was shocked. No one thought this was gonna happen. <laughs> All the trainees there. Uh, Chen Guan Lui like fell on the floor crying. Did you oh, see yeah. that? Yo, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. crazy. This was this was a shock, and honestly, I'm okay with this. I don't have to. I think it works. This. It works. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not. I think them being one and two just feels like. Hey, Hanbin ch- is still going to be center sometimes. The global you know? slash China vote went ham, right? Clearly, yeah. China learned from uh, Girls Planet Nine Nine Nine, where Zhao Ting barely made it in ninth place because everyone assumed she was going to be like top three, right? Mm-hmm. And they learned that no, we cannot get distracted and vote for other kids because we think our kids are safe. They literally all just voted for Ricky and uh, Zhang Hao, and they made it in. Oh man! And then, as I mentioned earlier, they ran out of time. We didn't even get to figure out where Kate ended up. But then they just shockingly announced, "Yeah, Eugene's ninth, guys," and they just <laughs> ended the show. Yeah. And we were like, oh, oh, Kate. Oh. It was, oh, it was so shocking. Sad. I don't. Kate, I mean, Keita is now stuck under Rain's tutelage again. I feel terrible for him. Stuck in the the Rain basement with in Cipher. Bad luck. Honestly, I also felt a little shocked for Yujin's ranking. Yeah, he fell so much. If you look yeah. at the numbers, he's a step below the kids who are in eight, seven, six are all somewhat near each other, mm-hmm. and Yujin's like significantly lower than them. Yep, that is yeah. true. Yeah, fifth, okay. yeah, fifth through eighth are all close to each other. Ooh, yes, they're somewhere in the thirteen thousand. <sighs> yeah, so that's a that's a yeah. grouping, and then Ricky's one step, and then Matthew's another step, and then Hanbin's another step, and then Zhang Hao's another step. But this fifth through eighth were all about the same, and then Eugene's significantly lower than them. So that was pretty shocking. Crazy stuff. And they ran out of time so much, we didn't get to see any other point total, so we don't know who got ten. Um. I heard rumors that it was Jay. I heard about that too. I don't have any proof though, but let, let me check. Boys, planet. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the the whole rush at the end was kind of like kind of a noose. I don't know. It made it hard to really process like what was going on, but shocking switch. Of like placements for some people, um, I don't know. I really hope Keita is able to do something, whether in Cipher or outside of Cipher. I don't know. 
But the, I, I, to be honest, that was the one thing that I felt like, dang, if everything, I think like everything made sense except for him not being in the. In the I kind group. of agree with that. I, yeah. I thought like I think it's kind of shocking that Keita didn't admit it because it means that we ended up with um. Matthew, who I kind of consider as a Korean trainee, more or less. He's a Korean guy. Korean Additionally, American, Matthew yeah. said, Korean my Korean. mom wanted me to sing English in that one song. You remember that whole thing? And then he gave <laughs> his ending speech in Korean to his mom. Bruh. <laughs> I thought that was something. Additionally, Zhang Hao spoke all the languages in his speech. He spoke Chinese, uh, Korean, English, and uh, Japanese. Oh my god. In his thank you speech. So he and they're all pretty good. He yeah, thanked all of his good. fandoms. But yeah, Eugene ended up, and that's the group. We have no Japanese kids, two Chinese kids, and Matthew in terms of the global contestants. Oh man, Whoa. we have um, yeah. we have seven, six Korean kids, Matthew, and two Chinese kids. No Japanese, surprising. Well, uh, rip to the um, our island folks. I had I thought this yeah. was a good season. What did you right, Anita? I thought it was it was interesting how it developed because it clearly was leaning more towards the produced uh, concept yeah, yeah like i think i felt it more in this in this season as opposed to girls planet um not exactly the same there were some changes of course but it was nice i think the the performance level and actually seeing them be able to do live stuff at the end for the finale was really cool. The the average level of contestant was very high this season. Yeah, um, it was nice. If I remember correctly, every kid who made the top 18 was a 3-star or 4-star in the first evaluation stage. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that just proves that all the good kids made it. Um, I think there was a gap. Like th There were some people that were really, really rough or like really, really good. <laughs> it was extremes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like... Honestly, a lot of the controversies this season weren't that bad. Other than, like, Zhang Shuaibo and, like, Christian Evil editing. We didn't have any, like... Yeah. Two, and, like, the Matthew incident was an incident, but it wasn't, like, oh, he's so Ooh. effed, you no. know? No, well, it, obviously, top three. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, a Chai Bing edit or something like that, right? Which was horrendous for her voting. Oh, man. It was so bad. Um, Yeah, I would say at the end, it was shocking, but, like... I could see it happening, right? It wasn't her like mm -hmm. a horrendous shock. Um, ah, uh, yeah. So it's Boys Planet. I had a good time because we covered Boys Planet, but it's not like we had to give you a play by play on every single episode. I think that would have ruined my enjoyment of the show. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I had a good time with this. You too, Anita. Yes, it was nice. Um, hey, Queendom puzzle. Are you excited, Anita? Queendom Yo, puzzle. I am curious, but I'm I am cautious. Because of the nature of it, and like, I'm so hype! I'm so hype for Queen of Puzzle. We'll see, we'll see. I, I'm interested to see how they end up doing, like, the voting, guys, like so voting, and also like the concept of like they tend to have like missions, right? So I, are they yeah, gonna do like I think most people solo are excited for stuff. the solo stuff? Ooh. Yeah, because I mean, most of them are entering as an individual contestant, right? I think like, there's gonna be no solo stuff. I think it's just gonna be like produce. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll see that. Be, I mean, I, I wonder how people are going to work together there. I'm, ex I'm, ex I think what everyone's excited for is the um, the interactions between these kids, right? Because it's like, yeah, it would be interesting. It's gonna be fun because most of them are coming as like a lone representative or one of two, so it's not like you have a whole group of kids you know. It's not like Yeho is coming eight deep, right? So, right. Lauren's voting for Miru out of the kids so Let's far. That's go, his one Miru. pick. <laughs> um, yeah, so this has been Soji Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. I'm Doug. I'd like to thank Warren and Nita for joining this week as we conclude our coverage of Boys Planet. Uh, join us next time when we cover Taeyang, maybe Woods, and most definitely Les Arafim. We'll see you guys then. Um, Y'all should be watching uh, Hemeri Yechepa on uh, uh, the variety <laughs> show, just saying. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Oh, 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 oh,